Tucker and the Badger. Hey everyone, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is time for another champion build video. Today we are actually going to be looking at Cassidy in mid lane, and this is after his rework, because he was just too darn strong apparently. Um, fun fact, he's still strong, so um, probably not quite as simple as his last way to get strong, but he's still good champion. So we're going to go ahead and talk about him today. We are going to cover a little bit of everything you need to know if you are looking to play Cassidy. We are going to talk about his abilities, we're going to talk about items that you might want to be trying out to build on him. We are also going to talk about his runes and his masteries, and just a little bit of everything you might want to know about Cassidy. So, let's go ahead and start off by talking about his abilities. And starting off there, we need to talk about his passive, which is Void Stone. Cassidy takes 15% reduced magic damage and ignores unit collision. So, pretty straightforward passive, really. Um, and we're going to be obviously using that because it's helpful. Um, yeah, it's a passive. Anyways, moving on to his Q ability. This is his Null Sphere. What happens here is Kasten is going to fire a bolt, interrupting um, channeling spells and dealing damage, magic damage, scales from ability power, and it's also going to grant him a shield that will absorb magic damage for 1.5 seconds. So pretty helpful, kind of nice. Previously, this was able to block, or wasn't able to block, it would silence enemies. So, previously it was a silence, that's what they got rid of, that was one of the bigger things they kind of nerfed on his kit. But the shield is still nice, I do like it, it is, it is pretty good, I, I don't mind it. That is what his Q ability is. Now his W ability, which is as another blade, you're going to put a point into this at level 2. Passively, Kasten's basic attacks draw energy from the void, which deal damage. Um, and uh, yeah, super nice. Actively, Kasten charges, um, he charges his blade, sorry, causing his next basic attack to deal magic damage and restore a percentage of his missing mana. And you get more back, actually, if you attack an enemy champion. So um, you can use this to kill a creep, get more mana back if you need some mana. Also does some nice damage. Pretty good stuff, really. That is your W ability. And then your E ability, which is what you'll put a point into at level 3, is your Force Pulse. Now, Kasten draws energy from spells that are cast in his vicinity, gaining a charge um, whenever a spell is cast near him. Upon reaching 6 charges, Kasten will use this, or you can use this. It's going to deal magic damage, and it will slow enemies by a percentage for the next 3 seconds. Pretty good crowd control. It's going to do it out in a cone in front of him, so you will be able to slow a handful of people if they're all in front of you. Um, it's pretty good crowd control. Three seconds is a decent amount of time, so it's pretty helpful. Um, early on in the game, though, it's a little bit more difficult to use Force Pulse in the lane because it takes six charges of using abilities to get it off, whether it's you or the other mid laner. So you got to be kind of careful about that. So early on, it's not really up all the time because six charges of using abilities is a little bit tougher. It's usually not happening as much. So don't put a point into it too early. There, we're going to get ulted by Gragas. We don't really get out right away. Luckily, we will get a shield, though, from our Q when we launch it back on him, which will not kill us. And he took way too many tower hits in that exchange. I also ignited him, too. So we're actually going to get out. And we get double buffs, which is always helpful. So he went a little bit too ham. May have forgot about the shield on the Q. But that will result in a kill for us. Now... Let's finish off with his ultimate, which is his Rift Walk. Now, Rift Walk casts and teleports to a nearby location, dealing magic damage. Now, this is going to deal a flat amount, obviously, and then 2% of your maximum mana as that magic damage um, to the surrounding enemies. Additionally, each subsequent Rift Walk in the next 12 seconds costs double the amount of mana, and it will deal an additional amount of flat damage plus 1% of maximum mana that you have. Um, in additional damage. So the cost can stack up to four times. The cost and the damage, really, can stack up to four times. So as you continue to use it, you get more damage out of it, but it's going to start to cost you quite a bit of mana. Its cost initially is 75. So 75, 150, 300, and then 600. So not cheap if you keep using it. So you got to kind of judge how much you're using and be a little bit careful. Now, luckily, we do get some mana back when we do use our Nether Blade, but still got to be careful because you can burn through it. But what we're doing to deal with some of these issues that we can have with these mana problems, and now that our ultimate scales from mana, 
What we're going to be doing is building kind of the mana side that you see on certain champions when you try to build mana type items. Um, in some comparisons, this could be similar to Singed if you're building like a damage Singed. So early on, well early on we're going to get into a fight. We are going to find Rengar. We did get him spotted. We'll be able to pick up a kill on him. Um, Nami gets destroyed by a rocket. Sorry, Nami gonna happen but what we do with our build then is we want to address having um, a few different things that will help us from becoming too mana starved and to have a very large amount of base mana so what we do obviously is we pick up a catalyst the protector and a tier of the goddess early on in the game now both of these items will help us in different ways we'll stack the tier over time so we can eventually make that into a seraph's embrace which will help us with damage two which is good and then we'll have a lot of base mana and also mana regeneration very helpful so we get more damage overall in all those aspects and then we also pick that catalyst of protector because early on while we are laning that's helpful too because each time we level up we will be getting some health and mana regen back to us actually a fairly large chunk of it regen back to us um, while we are laning there it's happening right now while we are in lane and that's going to be super helpful too because you get to stay in lane a lot longer as Cassadin with all that regen. Another thing that is really to be noted with the Catalyst of the Protector is Cassadin is a losing lane. Cassadin is not a strong laner. Now, a lot of people might think, well, Cassadin's a really strong champion, though. Well, yes, he is a strong champion, but that's because of his mid and late game. Now, here we are in mid game now, but early on in the game, Cassadin will typically lose lane or usually get out farmed. Um, now that he really doesn't have his silence, it's, I don't want to say emphasized, but that's what his shield kind of helps make up for. Because if you really want to get all those minion kills, you're going to probably take a little bit of damage. Because he is a melee focused champion. So we're going to get into a little bit of a fight here, quick. We're going to do some significant damage to Gragas. He throws the bear out to knock me into tower range, which he just throws it too far out. Um, which is unfortunate for him. I still would have been able to clean it up. So not really an issue anyways, but we pick up another kill. But the back to that whole Rod of Ages, the Catalyst thing is, that allows you to have a little bit of a stronger lane without going back so much or having to go back because you'll get that regeneration, which will be helpful. Also, the Catalyst has health built into it, so you get a little bit, I don't want to say tanky, but you have more health. Always a, help, a helpful thing to have. And if you do what I did, which we will get the, the uh, Rod of Ages first, the nice thing about getting the Rod of Ages first is, as you have it for that next duration, it will continue to stack, meaning you are going to get more health and you are going to get more mana. Um, so, pretty helpful. Good item, really. Rod of Ages, I think, is a little almost underutilized, but you got to build it fairly early to get the best effects from it. So, we have the tier as well. We're stacking that up still. Like I said, we'll build that into our um, uh, embrace. And then we also have finished off our boots because we want our magic pen boots. You know, we are a caster and uh, helpful, really. Also, when we get our boots early, that allows us to roam a little bit quicker around the map. It's always helpful to kind of roam a little bit as Cassin if you can, especially if you need to help out your other lanes. He's a very strong roamer um, with his rift walk, so you can get across the map rather fast, so it's very helpful. So getting our boots early is not a terrible idea. We are gonna shut down the shut downable Singed, who's actually doing decent this game. Uh, in top lane against our Nessus. And yeah, we're going to continue on. We also do have another blasting one. We will be building that too, obviously, you know, into those items as the game progresses. Let's go ahead and shift a little bit focus now. Let's talk about masteries quick. Now, masteries are pretty simple. The only thing that might catch a few people out, obviously, we're going to do 21 in the offensive tree. But over in the defensive trees, we're going to put our nine points. We're not going to put it into the utility. We're going to put it into defense because, once again, to get in and deal a lot of your damage, you have to be close to them to get the rift walk damage, and then you're going to want to be autoing them with your active W on that nether blade. So you're going to need to be in close range, meaning you're going to take some damage, which is nice w nice now with the change from the silence to the shield. The shield comes to be decently helpful. Here we're just going to jump on uh, Ezreal. Unfortunately, we take a bomb, and we take a handful of damage from Jinx, and we're just going to dive to her. So we die. It's going to happen. But... Um, you're going to get into melee range, so it's helpful to have a little bit of defensive stats in that 9 on that defensive side of the tree. So that's what we're doing with those masteries, is a 21-9-0. Then, for our... Mm, how do we want to do this? For our... I'm just thinking about runes, because there's two options now since they changed them. 
basically we're gonna go with the magic penetration marks pretty pretty generic stuff there as for the seals here's a couple choices you can do the um, armor seals if you need to use those against maybe armor or attack damage mids that are focused that way or you can go with something like oh health I think I had health ones, the flat health. Because a little bit more health early on probably is pretty helpful nowadays. So um, either of those will work. I like health personally. And then as for your glyphs, this is the two options. There's the dangerous way, which I usually do, which is the AP per level, meaning you're going to scale even better through mid and late game. Or you can go with the magic resist glyphs if you're worried about magic damage mids um, or ability power mids or whatever. Both are helpful. I live quote unquote dangerously. I go with the scaling AP ones because I like to scale really well into mid and late games so I can do a lot of damage. I have usually okay laning phases. And I don't typically feed, so I don't think it's a problem. But if you're worried about it, you can go with the magic resist. It'll go a long way. And then for the quintessences, we go with the flat AP quintessences. So pretty pretty helpful going on there. We did finish off our embrace and we also have an needlessly large rod we can tower dive quick because you can usually get out of range fast as well obviously with riff walk as you can see when we're doing it around the map we can make it through quite thick walls we're gonna catch out jinx because we saw her run up to lane and if i was like if she backs behind this tower i'm gonna find her which we did find her and now we're just gonna keep going through walls and we're gonna escape from people because Kasten has great mobility so we're building this um, this needlessly large rod, and we're going to be taking the needlessly large rod and teaming it up with the uh, blasting one. We're going to be currently working towards the death cap, so we can just kind of maximize our damage a little bit early. Um, we have some other items we're going to be going with too in, in a second, but uh, we're, we're getting we're getting things worked out. Really, we're getting we're getting things going. We have a decent amount of AP too right now. I'd read the number, but it's way too small on my screen. So that's how things are going on. So early on in the game, you got to play a little bit safe with Cast, and if you get some ganks, those are helpful. He luckily does have a slow. Once you hit six, you are a lot safer in the lane because you can escape from things quicker and a lot faster and a lot easier too. The other nice thing too is, like we said, you can start to roam a lot more. So don't be afraid to roam. Now, a little bit of a fight obviously happening here. We're going to jump in and kill Jinx. Got to focus that carry, get rid of her. We are all slowed up now too and burning, taking a decent amount of damage actually from Singe. Luckily we have a little bit of that shield to help us out with a little bit of, uh, of you know, just reducing that damage incoming. We will pick up another assist there on Gragas. And then we are actually going to go after the Singed. I will go in and tank the tower a little bit. And luckily that will allow our Nasus to finish off the kill. So we'll pick up another assist. So um, we are turning this t game in our, uh, our way now. If you checked it out earlier at the top, we were actually behind. By not a ton, but a little bit. So, but we're we're in uh, we're in the cast and stride part. We have a lot of damage now. Um, we're gonna exchange a kill with Rengar right now. Um, he hurts a little bit too, surprisingly. Oh, he's got a feral flare. That's why. Probably decently stacked. Who knows? I don't. So, as this game goes on, we're gonna continue building. Obviously, we have. Are we gonna have enough for the death cap? We do have enough for the death cap at this point, which is good. This is kind of our quote unquote. I don't want to call it core, but core. Now the next part of our core, you can have multiple cores, it's possible. Um, you can see us, we're starting to build it with one of the newer items in the game, which I can't think of the name of it for some reason because it's newish, but it looks like a little sperm. Yep, calling it. Um, that's going to be building though with our, uh, with a sheen, and that's going to be the Lich Bane. And that Lich Bane now procced when we come flying in is going to deal a lot of damage. Um, I know... Recently, Lich Bane has received a little bit of a nerf, but it's still a really good item on mages, or certain mages, not all of them, but it's good still on like your Ziggs, if you're like a tower push Ziggs, because Ziggs does a crazy amount of damage to towers because of his passive too. And then, um, this Lich Bane's gonna help us out. It's gonna give us, you know, that ability power. It's also gonna give us more mana because of the sheen in it, which will result in more damage, um, because all of the uh, things that are helping us with mana damage and just our ultimate and everything, really. So it's pretty helpful. You really kind of want it. Also, increased movement speed is great. That is super helpful. You're already super mobile. Let's make you more mobile. That means you're harder to kill, and it's easier to chase and kill people, such as Pexy, Pesky Jinx. Or if you just want to go murder, 
Zillion, like that. Just hit him in the face. He's gonna melt. Um, super fun stuff. Gonna get the double kill, and then we're gonna run away because we are kinda low after that. So we will take some decent damage. Now, uh, a few people might be saying or thinking, and we'll throw it out there. We'll talk about it. Um, well, if you're building all of this mana, why don't you pick up a frozen heart and get one of those? You'll get a lot of armor out of the deal, and you're gonna be getting more damage too because, you know, it's more mana. And it's gonna help you out on your ultimate. It'll stack with your embrace. Why not that? Well, you could, really, if the enemy team is just crazy shit tons amount of, you know, physical damage. It probably wouldn't be a terrible idea and probably could pick that up last. Um, but because we don't necessarily need it, typically at the end I would pick up an hourglass to get some armor because if we're going to get into close range, it's nice to have that. So it's not a terrible option if there are tons of AD. Like if it's like a full AD team with, team with like a Sona or Lulu support, you know, only one AP technically. But this team has plenty of AP, so we're not really needing to worry about that much uh, armor. And luckily, I mean, our Q shield, which is huge at this point because of all of our damage, because um, it scales with your ability power, that is going to turn in and that's going to help you resist all that magic damage. So you don't really need to worry about tons of magic resist, although if you for some reason need an Abyssal Scepter, I guess you could do that. So you can finish out with Zonians, an Abyssal, or a Frozen Heart if they're like 800% AD. So, but that's pretty much going to be the game. We just finished up with the triple kill. We'd finish off that Lich Bane next, obviously, and then probably pick up the Hourglass. But at that point, you're pretty unstoppable as Cassidy. So, pretty strong. Still a good champion. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Everything you need to know is in the description. But I'll just see all of you guys in the next build video. Kill him. So, here we're going to come in on bottom. They actually decided to try to split push this while we were having our advantage up in top lane. I'm going to move in, though. I think I can solo both of them, um, which... There's that trail of that Dustbringer giving us enough room. I'm going to go ahead and take out Caitlyn. She is a superior threat over Nidalee right now. And then I can finish off Nidalee. So 